Well, good evening, yeah, Brother Mark. Uh, tonight I'm going to deal with, I think, what Amy would call a heavy hitter. And I'm going to call an emotional third rail. Uh, some might want to call it a zebra. Uh, for those of you not to have been following the channel, zebras are those really controversial topics that just the mere mention of it can cause some some real explosions. But I think that I think I want to share something about what I want to share on tonight is the destruction of a Turner Syndrome ministry. It's been gone now for a few months now. But I've been doing some real prayer and soul searching on this and and I don't think it's a Brother Mark issue this time. This time it was we had a Turner Syndrome ministry that was actually destroyed by the butterflies. And I, I think that it's no longer just as, you know, people want to always you know, blame me, but I think we have to kind of you know, look at look at the facts tonight. And I'm going to ask you to, tonight not to do the two, two to three minutes. You know, I, know I, I, watch some of, I watch some of it, and people usually watch about five minutes of it, but I really encourage everybody just to kind of hang tough and if it's if it's too triggering that's okay you know just turn it off that's fine if you can't take it all right that's fine you know, just just turn it off i i you know i understand if you're not comfortable with it, you want to come back to it later uh that that's that's okay too so so that so that said uh, let me let me go ahead and and go and go on some things. I don't know why I'm wearing my headsets when I'm not taking a call. So, <laughs> sorry about that one. <laughs> okay, nothing intended. Uh, before I get started, though, um, you know the def definition of zebra. And like, one other thing I want to really touch on, and I think this is like a really good point. I worked for a public radio station when I was when I was in college, really successful one. And we had when we had to write up. We had to write what was called discrepancy report. If if something messed up or somebody didn't show up for a shift or somebody really blew something, uh, you could you cannot use the a person's name if you were complaining about somebody. You could say the board operator, uh, the announcer. You could say the person in the in the feed in the feed room, uh, the engineer, whatever. But you couldn't you couldn't use the names. I couldn't say, uh, for example, Joe Wells uh, didn't show up for his shift. And even even a even a high ranking uh, news director uh, was was quite right when I did something wrong and I messed up and I was wrong. And she had every she had every right to complain about my performance. But she made the mistake of using using my name and saying Mark Seward did X Y and Z. And oh boy, <laughs> and uh, and management read read the riot act, and I think that's a good. So that's a good piece of advice. So would, if somebody does something good and they deserve kudos, I'm you know hey I'm gonna I'm gonna give them I'm gonna give them the kudos. I'm gonna give them the you know the compliments because hey Turner syndrome is it's hard work. I've seen it. I've watched it. I know. You know I, I get those late late night. Uh, middle of the night text and it's and I can understand why and then the insomnia and why people just want to why sometimes the women just want to bang a hole in the wall I get it uh, I also want to just give you something and I want you and I'm going to pose a question and I want you to hold that thought and I'm going to come I'll come back to it in a, in a few minutes but what would it be like in an hour or two any Turner Syndrome woman or maybe to a mom, or maybe to a to a TS mom or dad for that matter, or maybe 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 it's possible. What would it feel? So I'm just going to direct it though to the to the butterflies themselves. What would it feel like if all of a sudden your doctors were taken away, your therapists, your social workers, and you could not you could you were banned from seeing them, you could not see them. Uh, I mean they they I mean they were. I mean, even got to the point where if you contacted them, uh, you might be hearing from their attorneys, or you go on the property. Hospital security is going to escort you off the property. 
what would that feel like? And I think that would be pretty chilling. So I want you to hold that hold that thought, and then you can then you can kind of put yourself in in, uh, in my shoes when when we get there. We had I'm going to use I'll use fictional I'm going to I'm going to use fictional names. Uh, I'm going to use fictional ex examples. I think you know not just like the operations report. I'm not going to. I think it's wrong to rub somebody's face in it. You know, on 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 social, on social media. It's just wrong. It, I mean, the fact that's been done to me doesn't make doesn't make it right. That's a whole whole another video, and that that will be addressed appropriately. However, uh, the we had a the Turner Syndrome community was blessed with a really great relationship with with the, with the church. Uh, just so we can, so we can, we'll just, we're going to call it City Church, and and we're going to say that this church was a member of the George Whitfield Association of Churches, um, a, 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 a conservative Methodist denomination um, with a, with the churches in the U.S., Canada, and then and then foreign and then foreign mission churches um, around the world. Uh, City Church has is actually celebrating its its hundredth uh, anniversary. It's kind of I wonder what the hundredth anniversary is going to be like with the church being shut down because of the COVID virus. That's uh, they had l just a love for the community, their social work, and their and their outreach just just phenomenal. Their they had specialized ministry uh, for women. Um, for children and for parents with uh, with with spe with special needs, and then we, there was a f vibrant counseling and and re recovery community that could easily uh, minister and cater uh, to any to any uh, butterfly that wanted it online or in person. There, and there was some real there was some real excitement. There was like. What is Turner's room? What can we, we want to know more about it? What 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 can we do to help? And it was some real excitement, and then, and the real neat thing is through some promotions on Facebook, we genuinely and I went back and double double checked my facts and figures, and went back and and double checked, uh, we were actually getting people. Uh, Watching the city ch church services online from overseas, and that was just absolutely that just absolutely blew me away. So, but uh, sadly, it all came, it all abruptly came to an end. And I think we have to kind of, you know, take, you know, take a look why. Now, for I, I want to say for the record, they did the right thing. I support them a hundred percent. There are no hard feelings. I just feel that. You know, the way I look at it is that those doors closed, new ones are going to open. It didn't work, and it didn't work out, and that's okay. However, here's where it did leave me in kind of a bind. At the beginning of the video, I said, "What would it feel like if all of a sudden you couldn't see your doctors, your your therapist, your social worker, your endocrinologist? You couldn't see them. That you were just cut off." And, well, I was in an active re recovery community um, at City Church, and all of a sudden, it was you know, just because of the because the fact that a relationship with City Church was was terminated. Then all of a sudden, a lot of my a lot of my good uh, fellowshipping and, and a lot of my good tools that I needed to use to recover were all of a sudden gone. Uh, of course, this happened right on the at the beginning of the COVID. Of the coronavirus shutdown here in Ohio too, so that that didn't, you know, that that didn't help. So, again, I wanted to, just for the record, I mean, there's no, there's no oh, woe is me. And that's, and there's no, there's there's no, there was no resentment. There was yeah, there was a few hours of disappointment and, and sadness, and, and actually the TS community and I at the time just kind of processed it. But we kind of accepted it, but I had a lot of time on vacation and over the week that I started to you know, really think about um, you know what's you know what's what's going on uh, 
some of the some of the dreams and uh, let me just talk about some of the dreams and hopes that we that we really that that I and a couple from Canada had and and we were looking at an I mean, we had the beginnings of an online ministry. Uh, some of the long-term dreams was to set up maybe a residential uh, community for you know, for butterflies that maybe just needed a sense of being with other butterflies. Maybe in nature condition that they made it needed ex extra care, and then I, obviously that would that would have been something professional. So it was a long way off, but I was, uh, that was one dream. We did try to start up the online Turner Syndrome support meeting, and never to get quite off the ground. But hey, credit you know credit for trying. Um, we were also looking at meetings for parents, spouses, and friends. Uh, one of my longtime dreams was actually to see a one day Turner Syndrome conference and. Ironically enough, uh, as I was looking at recovery, you know, recovery issues, and you know, a, a TS one hundred and one for the community, for the butterflies. What are some, you know, what are some of the issues? What are some of the latest trends? And ironically enough, I, for the keynote speaker, I was looking at none other than Amy Jerton Lark. I would have loved, I would have loved to hear her story, eh? uh, how she got in YouTube. I heard a little bits and pieces, and that would have been. Would have been quite entertaining and and quite and quite uplifting. But uh, we were also at the time looking for for legitimacy. We were actually uh, figuring out how to affiliate with the Turner Syndrome Foundation. Uh, one butterfly wisely suggested that maybe Leaping Butterfly Ministries would be a would be a a better fit. And we actually we actually toyed we toyed with that idea. So, however. When the one of the pastors who, who oversaw it had one important rule: no drama. He was emphatic on that. We love to help you. Uh, we're here for you, but no drama. And I mean, it's just. I mean, that was etched in stone for all time and eternity. No drama and he was clear on that one i mean that the the line was not going to be crossed that's it no drama well unfortunately there was and and i'm afraid that's what killed it uh and we're, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and and look in that uh because of the turn syndrome bullies the church was on high alert and i mean there's a and you know they were they were wondering you know how were they how were they going to be attacked? I would safely say that I think after a while because of all the drama, they made the very wise and right decision to shut the ministry down. Also, one of the nails in the coffin was that the senior pastor of City Church was was attacked by one of the bullies on his on his Twitter account with. Uh, with false accusations, and I, I, if anything was the nail on the coffin that really killed the ministry, that was it. Was it a Mark Seward issue? That nah, was a bully. That was a bully that 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 nailed the final nail by by putting false accusations. And that was that was one that was one other thing. So the church felt that because of the bullying, they could not safe, safely minister. Uh, there were some other contributing contributing factors too. Um, we had a couple that wanted to that lived outside of the U.S. and want, wanted to wanted to come and be an active part of City Church. And uh, by the way, I will say, just as an aside, I will say that you know I've made some mistakes too and. One of my big mistakes was not listening to them and just monopolizing the conversation, and not hearing them. So in the uh, in the end of that relationship, this is there any, I was always very careful. Is there anything you want to share? Is there any concerns that that you have? Yeah, but um, here's and again now I'm not only looking at things in my shoes, I'm also looking at being in the shoes of the. One of the pastors who oversaw it, uh, maybe being on the church board or the decision makers of City Church, 
and you know just in just the deciding you know, looking looking at the situation is is this a viable ministry for us to, you know to continue well the the uh, the members uh this couple from out from overseas said that they were members of a George Whitfield church oh fantastic and i went in and did some investigating and found out there's there was funds available for 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 immigration you know the conditions you got to be you got to be a, a member on the rolls of a of another George Whitfield church and it was communicated to me that oh yeah we are we we go to uh, we go to we go to central church in in Bournemouth England oh fantastic great well let your pastor let your pastor know I'll do some things on on my side and we'll go and then we'll see you know see what we can do it was it was a massive undertaking and it was going to take a while to you know pull up I was really you know, I was really excited about it at the, the time it would have been really neat to see them you know to come to America um uh, and I went up to the higher levels some of the churches I went to a prominent uh, prof, uh university professor in one of the Whitfield colleges you know to talk to talk to them and just you know, see what we could do. He said, "Oh yes," and he told me who to get in touch with and how the church should get should get started. So we were starting to get the paperwork rolling, and then all of a sudden, I said, "Oh well, we're not members." Oh. Okay. Now I had to go back to the pastor and said, "Well, you know, about this couple from from overseas." Yeah, unfortunately, not members. Oh. And they looked at me like like I had about as much uh, much credibility as well. You could fill in the blank, but my credibility was really shot, and it just made me look it just made me look like a blathering idiot. So, and so that action. So we, one of the rules that we always have to be careful. With, how do your actions affect others? And that's you know that's something that that whether you're a butterfly or a friend, that's good. You know, that's a good rule to remember. How do your actions affect others? And the other thing, though, as Christians, uh, this particular couple would not listen to to sound biblical counsel. And this got the this got the attention of, of, of the church too. And I was like, well. You know, obviously, before you know, before we invest in them, yeah, we really got to make you know, make sure if this is if this is going to be worth our while, and this is going to be, you know, is going to be really beneficial for for the good for the good of the church, and what, the, and and one, you know, one of the one of the members of the family said, "Well, I don't need a church. I have my own church." Well, I'll give you a nice piece of advice there. Jim Jones thought the same way. Look up people's temple. A word to the wise. Uh, but in sound biblical counsel, now I'm going to talk more as as two. I mean, just bear with me for just a moment. But if we but the Whitfield Association of Churches, you know, believe in the believe in the authority of of Scripture. They believe in in accountability. And you know they believe in in, in you know, uh, being you know high moral turpitude and being men and women of of, of integrity. Accountability is a part of, of any evangelical church. I can't prove my own papers. I have my, I have my I have my blind spots, and I, there have been times where I've been taken out behind the woodshed, and it didn't feel good, but. I knew it was I knew it was for my own good. And just a couple just a couple of scriptures just to kind of support you know the, the position of the Whitfield churches. Uh, the uh, Proverbs eleven three: the integrity of the upright will guide them, but the crookedness of the of the treacherous will destroy them. Where there is no guidance, the people uh, fail, but in the abundance of counselors there's safety. That's Proverbs eleven fourteen. That's one of my favorites. Uh, Proverbs twenty-seven, seventeen. If I'm doing this wrong, iron sharpens iron, so one man helps another. 
we build each other up, we listen, we, uh, we encourage, we might critique and love. It might be hard stuff, and it's hard stuff to learn. Uh, from the New Testament in Hebrews 12, it says, Nor be weary when reproved by him, meaning God the Father, for the Lord disciplines those he loves and chastises everyone he receives. For it's discipline that you have to endure because God's treating you as sons. Okay. And you, know, you could you, if you want to stretch the context of sons and daughters, you can I mean you you can you can you can do that, but I think in the original context it just meant it meant men it, it, the context there in mean, rich in the Greek would have been men and women, but that's just beside the point. Um uh, but the fact that they wouldn't listen to biblical counsel, and this is where the one scripture, though, and this is really serious because this contributed to the, to the shutdown of the ministry. James, the half-brother of Jesus, writes, Know this, my beloved brother. Let every man be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. For the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore, put away all filthiness, in rampant wickedness, and receive with meekness, humility, uh, and then um, the implanted word which is able to save your souls. Be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. I mean, God gave us two ears and one brain. <laughs> it is a lot more rough. They would say, take the cotton off your ears and put it in your mouth, but I won't go that won't go that far. But uh, heaven knows, yours truly has had to go through that. There is, and this is this. We had we had an incident with this couple who wanted to be uh, part, you know, part of the church, but had some really so was celebrating some things that was perceived as as a zebra, as really controversial, and it was making people uncomfortable, not only in the church. To my wife, uh, to other members in the Turner Syndrome community, uh, a lot we had some really good people leave because of it. We tried, and yet when I tried to go, this couple say, "Hey, you know this." I got a lot of anger and a lot of a lot of belligerence, and the church knew about it too. And so you know, we look at. And then it not only not only and then the other situation that fiasco also hurt somebody in recovery, and because somebody was invited to a TS page, and instead they saw the zebra ministry, and, and that woman had had PTSD flashbacks because. Of, I had I got called into the uh, I got called in the men's ministry director of of the church at, and it was not a very pleasant situation again and they would they would they wouldn't listen if they're not going to listen to me are they going to listen to sound counsel of, of those who are in the church and that left a real bad taste in pe in in in, 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 pe in people's mouths. I mean, the the pastor went, oh, no. I mean, he just, I mean, it, that was looking you know, in his face when I brought his attention. Like, oh, great. So, you know, in, in the in the end, I would, uh, I want to just show you something here for a second. If my phone stays put. Okay, so... Okay, I'm on the church board, and I want to support a ministry, but when I get bullies attacking the church, when I get people that are applying to be part of the ministry with a faulty resume, not being members of the Whitfield Association, and then causing controversy and not being listened to, I think the powers that be in the church went. And that's how the ministry got destroyed. 
It wasn't Mark Stewart this time. It was Butterflies. It was the TS Bullies. It was also... It was also a, 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 a couple whose reputation, now they look back on it. I mean, they mean well. They had a great heart for, for butterflies. But when I look at what's, you know, required to be part of, you know, the, the fictional George Whitfield churches, they didn't have what it took. So that that left a bad taste. And then the, and then the, then the attack by the bullies... So this time, it was Mark. It was the butterfly community. I think the butterfly community in this one is going to have to take ownership for it. It's hard. I mean, a few bad people just ruined it for everybody else. And for us Bible-believing believers, we're going to have to stand before the Lord. Can you really stand before the Lord if you, if you destroy a ministry? You know, it kind of goes back to we, none of us really want to talk about the. You know, really want to talk about the bullying. This 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 is destroying butterflies. It's destroying the rep, the reputation. Of what the Turning Syndrome community should be should be about, providing support, providing advocacy. I know a lot of people are afraid of, of, of speaking up. So, it's it's one of the, it's one of those hard it's one of those hard topics. Where do you go from here? Yeah. I don't know. But I think those you know it's it was. It was the drama that killed the ministry. The bullies that attacked the senior pastor. I, well, the threat's a couple and then one who actually did. And we, I mean, we've got screenshots. How do your actions affect others? Something, something to think about. I don't have any answers tonight. But I guess the question is, is we need to do something. I don't know what that something is. I'll be praying for, for, for wisdom on this one. So I hope though that we can, you know, come, you know, come directly. Oh, one last thing too. The church did do a, a series of reconciliation, and we also offered to reconcile with a couple of people. Instead, they're coming forth to uh, to come in for reconciliation. The church got attacked. They had to make a decision: is this something that they want to invest their time and energy in? I, I can put myself in their shoes and I'd have to say no. So, as I say, I don't have any answers. It's something that we got to pray for wisdom. And that's obviously something we're just going to have to either own or it's going to own all of us. Something, something to think about. As always, take what you like and leave the rest. And I'll talk to you next time.